What's happening, people? Hope you're all well. So, Jack Carroll gets his revenge on Josh Taylor. It's actually quite interesting because... Let me turn this off. Ugh, it's actually quite interesting because when the scorecards are being read out and he the scorecards were like 117, 111, Josh Taylor actually looked a little bit like disappointed. He was almost shaking his head when he heard 117, 111. So it's almost like he knew he lost the fight, but he thought it was closer. But either way, it was a competitive fight and Josh Taylor was having more success than in the first fight. He really struggled to land headshots in both fights, but this fight he was landing more headshots. Um, the, the difference was, the big difference was Jack Catterall was hurting Josh Taylor. And Jack Catterall's jab was the difference in this fight. I think that Josh Taylor, I think Josh Taylor lost this fight for two reasons. The first reason is because Josh Taylor is past his best. There's no doubt in my mind that Josh Taylor is past his, is past his best. This is not the Josh Taylor that fought Ahara Davis. This is not the Josh Taylor that fought Boranchek. This is not the Josh Taylor that fought Ramirez or Progre. This is a diminished Josh Taylor. But the second reason is because styles make fights and Josh Taylor's style does not match up well with Jack Carroll's style. It doesn't. Um, but nonetheless, Josh Taylor, he, he rallied, um, he showed that championship heart, but the problem was the eye catching punches were all landed by Jack Carroll in this fight because of Jack Carroll's shoulder roll and ring pacing and ring generalship, Josh Taylor really struggled to get anything going. And it almost seemed that whenever Josh Taylor let off some good work and there was more of it than in the first fight. Jack Carroll would immediately come back with something. And I'm telling you, Jack Carroll looked like the harder puncher in there as well, truth be told. So for me, this really is, you know, they're talking about a third fight. I honestly believe that Jack Carroll would win a third fight even more convincingly, probably even stop Josh Taylor. I think Josh Taylor's had a brilliant career. Don't tarnish it now by carrying on when you're past your best. I think a prime Josh Taylor would have struggled against Jack Carroll because of the Adelage in boxing. Styles make fights. But this is a diminished Josh Taylor. I think that Josh Taylor should bow out the game. There's no shame in it. He's had a phenomenal career. Don't become a David Hay of the scene. When people talk about David Hay now, they talk about David Hay versus Tony Bellew. But I remember when I was like a young man back in 2010, People were talking about David Hay like he was the hot topic in boxing. So don't, you know, people will remember if he stays on too long, his legacy is in jeopardy because people are going to think, oh, Josh Taylor, the one that lost to Jack Carroll twice in a row. I would say don't take the rematch, bow out the game and, you know, move on after having a successful boxing career. But, you know... Who, who am I to tell him what to do? Um, he can do what he wants. He's his own man. But that's my opinion. Jack Catterall at 140. I don't know. I think Jack Catterall just came up against a star that really suited him. I'm not saying he wouldn't have any success. But I do believe that Jack Catterall... Uh, I can't see him having major success in the division. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. But anyway, let me know what you think about the fight. Let me know your thoughts. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, hit the notification bell so you get a notification when I make a new video. If you appreciate my work and want to leave a donation, there's a link to that in the description. With that, enjoy the rest of your day and I'll see you on the next one.